Well, what's going on guys and welcome back to part 2 of the Watch Me Build a Lead Generation campaign for restaurants. In part 1 we basically drew out the flow uh, for that we used a free software called Draw.io uh, we then decided on the flow which is going to be sushi so we're doing all this for a fictional sushi restaurant and then we created the landing page and the thank you page and it basically showed you guys how you can create your own custom forms so that you can submit custom information uh, to the thank you page and uh, so that is all done and dusted and then in today's lesson we are going to be setting up the fictional Facebook page we're going to create the campaign and I'm going to show you how we can set up all of the tracking no I don't waste no time Okay guys and welcome back to part two of the Watch Me Build a lead generation campaign for restaurants. So uh, I'm not going to you know delve into the details of part one. If you want to know what happened in part one, please just watch part one. Uh, but like I said, we've got our flow, restaurant flow, Facebook ads to landing page to thank you page. Um, this is the information that we require on the landing page for them to opt in. And then the call to action is to basically um, call to confirm, not book to confirm. So let me just double... Double click on that to change that, call to confirm. So that is what we've done. Uh, in today's lesson, we are basically going to be creating a Facebook page. So we need to create a complete new Facebook page because this client or restaurant does not actually exist. Um, and then from there, we're going to set up all of the tracking with the Facebook pixel and we're going to get started on our campaign. And then in the next lesson, um, we'll basically create the advertisements. Um, we'll probably set up the ad set as well. So the audience, etc. in this uh, lesson, let's just see how far we get. So first things first, we need to create our Facebook page. So page name, we just call it all you can eat sushi and then let's go for Amsterdam. Why? Because that is where I'm moving to very, very soon. Um, category, restaurant, restaurant supply shop, restaurant wholesale, restaurant. Let me just double check, there's no su sushi restaurant. There we go, that might be better. So remove that. Um, fresh, all you can eat sushi, um, not buffet. What's the word? Let's no, just call it menu. Fresh all you can eat sushi menu open seven days a week. Um, Monday to Friday. It is, what should we do? 25 euros a head. 25. Where's the euro sign? There we go. Euros per person. Um, and then, actually, no, Monday to Thursday. Monday to Thursday. And then Friday to Sunday. It is unfortunately 27.50 per person. Now for those that think that is expensive, um, we are talking about Amsterdam, um, so we can inflate our prices. Create page. Waiting for that to create. In the meantime, I'll just quickly grab myself a drink of water. So all you can eat sushi Amsterdam was created, and now we can add our profile photo. Um, which will probably just be the logo. Is this the logo? Yes, it is. So add the logo. There we go. Or you can eat sushi. Cover photo. Let me just quickly get a cover photo. Um, we'll use a different image now. Sushi house. I like that. Let's just do that one. Speed things up a bit. Don't want you spending too long looking at images. Why will that not save? Ah, there we go. I think that might actually pop up twice. Um, so Facebook. Add a cover photo. Is it on the desktop? No, downloads. There we go. Open. Let's see what this looks like. There we go. Can we drag? Drag to readjust. Yeah, so there we go. So that is what it looks like. Save. Ah, to be fair, I'm quite proud of that. Looks looks quite legit. Um, there we go. So that's created. Uh, we don't need to create a username. And then that is that. Yeah, that's all right for now. We just use this. Don't want to spend too much time on this. So we've got our page. That is uh, step one and our to-do list is done. Now, let me just remove the wallpaper that we never actually used. We want to set up the tracking. So for the tracking, as I already mentioned, let me just save this and then go back into the funnel itself. As I mentioned, for the tracking, um, we can set the pixel. 
up in settings. So if you go to settings and then head to track and code here. Now I'm guessing all you guys know where to actually find the pixel. Just go into events manager, create a new pixel. Um, so I've already got it up here just to save time. Um, there we go. So Facebook pixel, copy that and paste that into the tracking code. So this pixel is connected to the ad account that we are going to be using. So there we go. So the head tracking code is on the uh, funnel itself. So every single page within that funnel will have that tracking code uh, set up. And then what we want on the thank you page is the lead pixel. So edit page. And the lead pixel is basically an event within the pixel um, that we can then optimize for. So settings, tracking code, and this is where we install our lead pixel. So copy this, that's all you need. Paste that and then save, and we are good to go. And that is how easy it is to install the pixel, guys. I've seen so many videos of people making it so much more difficult than there is, but that is all there is to it. So ads manager, uh, and now we basically create our campaign. So this is, at the time of recording this, this is what the Facebook business manager looks like. Um, so we've basically got campaign here where we set up the objective. So we tell Facebook, okay, this is what we want to optimize for. Then we have our ad sets here. The ad set is the audience um, that we create. So campaign is, for example, conversions. And then the audience is basically, you know, the, the audience that we want to get conversions for. And then the ads here is where we create the image, the copy, etc. And we also tell them, you know, what the destination URL is, which means the URL that we want to send the traffic to. In this case, it's um, the homepage of this one. So um, in this case, the destination URL is... Go to opt-in, wait for the page to reload. It's food reservations online dot opt-in mg6 sum. Okay, so campaigns create, and then we wanna go for conversions. Why? Because the lead generation campaign or objective is only if you are creating a Facebook lead form. So if you want to generate the leads on Facebook itself, then go for lead generation. If you want to generate the leads on a landing page, which we are doing in this case, then go for conversions. Now for all the other objections, you know, brand awareness, reach, traffic, etc., we're not going for that because we don't want traffic. We want conversions. We don't want people just randomly going onto our website. We want people that are most likely to become a lead by opting in. And Facebook's AI knows who is you know, more likely to click, but also who is more likely to become a conversion and actually uh, make that reservation. So conversions, which uh, the cost per click, etc., might be a bit more expensive, but all in all, the conversion, so the cost per conversion, cost per lead in this case, would uh, will most probably be cheaper than if we do a traffic campaign. So campaign name, BP, initials of the ANC brand Paneer, um youtube watch me build just just so i know to switch it off um youtube and then what we'll do is uh lead gem or you can eat sushi um and then we'll call this i don't know just campaign one that's fine we are not going to be creating an a b test because we use cbo and dynamic creative so we can leave this one off cbo stands for campaign budget optimization and basically what this will do is it will allocate the budget uh, in a way that Facebook thinks will get the most conversions. So for example, if our daily budget is actually 100 a day, it's not going to be, but for example, and we've got, let's say we've got five ad sets, so five different audiences, rather than giving each individual audience 20 euros a day to spend, which is 100 a day in total, uh, Facebook will allocate roughly 80% of the budget to one or two of the ad sets and then spread out the 20% over the remaining uh, you know, three or four. So, for example, 80 euros will go to campaign two, uh, ad set two, sorry, and then the rest will be spread out uh, you know, fairly evenly. So, we'll start off our campaign with 10 euros a day. Why 10? No specific reason why. Just seems to me like a good little number to start with. And if I do actually forget to switch off the campaign, then it's, you know, no harm done. We're not spending 100 a day on a campaign that doesn't actually exist. Um, we can give our ad set a name. I'm not going to be creating millions of ad sets this time. So let's just call this um, all you BP, all you can eat sushi um, audience test. Okay. The destination of the conversion is a website. 
conversions we want to be using this pixel for it why because that's the one that we set up we want to use the lead event so we are optimizing for leads and that lead event is on the last page so facebook will learn that on that second page the lead event will fire which will basically create a feedback loop with facebook and then facebook will know fairly quickly okay i need to find more people that are most likely to land on that last page where the lead event will fire dynamic creative we are going to switch on because we want to use multiple images we want to basically test out different types of images um, and see which one is you know basically the most profitable or will get us the most conversions so dynamic creative it's basically similar to campaign budget optimization. Um, you can upload multiple images, for example, five, and then Facebook will basically alternate between those five images and see which one is going to get us the most conversions, in this case, leads. So let's say image two out of five, um, you know, is by far the one that's getting the most leads, then Facebook will just show image two rather than one, uh, three, four, and five. Okay, so that's why we use Dynamic Creative. Um, do I always use this? Yes, I do actually. Um, I know some marketers don't like it, they would rather do it themselves, but I actually do like Dynamic Creative. So we can't create a custom audience because we don't have one. Location, uh, Netherlands, yes, because we're doing Amsterdam. So um, rather than doing the Netherlands, let's actually do just the city of Amsterdam, which is big enough to be fair. Um, there we go, Amsterdam north of Holland, plus 40 kilometers. Seems a bit steep for a sushi restaurant. So let's just stick to 17. How big is the audience? 1.5 million. Um, let's see how small that will go if we add sushi to the interest. Sushi, it's one of them things, and like you either love it or you hate it. Um, that is why I'm adding sushi as an interest. If it was just something more general, like um, I don't know, Italian pizza or something, you know, more people gen. You know, there's not a lot of people that don't like pizza, for example, as far as I know. Um, whereas with sushi, it is one of them things where you either love it or you hate it. So uh, sushi as an additional interest will decrease our audience to 210,000 people um is there anything else we can add to this sashimi i'm guessing there's a big audience overlap there yeah there is um what else sushi employees no restaurants will that increase the audience 720 uh yeah fair enough why not um yeah so restaurants sashimi and sushi Amsterdam plus 17 kilometers, which is basically the smallest um, scope you can get, which is still fairly big. You're almost touching Harlem there as well, so that is fine. Um, in terms of the placements, we are going to go on manual placements. Why not? Let's just go all out. All devices, yeah, that's fine. Um, just the news feeds for now. Why? Just because I feel like it. Sometimes I'll just leave automatic placements on, sometimes I don't. In this case, let's just do just Facebook, uh, Facebook and Instagram newsfeed. So that is it for the placements. Removing audience network as a placement may increase the cost per conversion. That is completely fine by me. Um, we do not want to run our ads on a schedule. We just want to basically um, you know, start from the start and then you know, move forward from there. So the Facebook page, um, let me see if I can find it. There we go. Or you can eat sushi Amsterdam. We don't have an Instagram page. So it'll just show the Facebook page. But that is it for today's lesson. I think this one was fairly short, shorter than uh, my usual videos. I do ramble on a lot. But just to wrap things up, we've now created the Facebook page. We've set up all the tracking. We've uh, selected our campaign objective and we've created our audience. Then in part three, um, like I said, we will... Um, basically complete the campaign by creating the advertisements and then what i'll do is i'll show you guys how to automate all of this with a software called zapier oh, okay guys so that was the end of part two hope you enjoyed this so like i said in the introduction and as i showed in the video we set up uh, the facebook page i showed you guys how to basically uh, install the tracking and where to set um, basically you know the lead pixel onto that page as well so everything is being tracked and then on the uh, facebook campaign we can basically optimize for that specific event, which in this case was lead. Now, for those of you that find this interesting and you basically you know, want my help uh, in setting up either your own social media marketing agency or getting results for your clients, I do have my very own coaching program. Everything for that will be linked in the description box down below. What you can do is 
hop on a free, you know, no strings attached call with either myself or someone on my team and we'll basically walk you through, um, you know, how the coaching works, what we can do, you know, what you get with it, etc. If we think you are a right fit and, you know, if you are happy with what we offer, then we can offer you a place uh, in the program and, like I said, we can work together alongside each other and I can help you build out your very own agency from the inside out. But for now, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you guys for part three. Yeah.